Hey guys, welcome to the Elite Coaching Podcast. In today's episode, we are going to cover nutritional strategies and adaptations for achieving a fantastic result, either with yourself or with your clients. I am joined today with my guest, Mark. How are you, buddy? How are you, Adam? Nice to be on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, great. Do you want to just tell the guys a little bit about yourself and your background before we, we dive into the topics we're going to cover today? Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, I am a one-to-one personal trainer. I'm based out of FBT um, gym in Swords, and I'm also an online coach. Um, I've been in the industry now about, not a long time, um, about two and a half years, but I've been studying this for, you know, eight, eight years or so. When, when you think of it, it goes back far. So, mm. um, yeah, the last kind of eight years or so have really been just me delving into nutrition and fitness, etc. So, yeah. That's pretty it, and pretty much it. And I'm also a competitive bodybuilder, so I have competed in about seven shows over the past four years or so. So, and um, that's just pretty brief. That's just kind of who I am, um, coaching wise, and then um, obviously what I do as well. So, yeah, I think you've definitely over the course of just what we were speaking about there off air, just over the course of your very short time, you have gained an awful lot of experience and um, within the industry just by that level of further education and that's why I wanted to bring you, bring you on today because you know from a, an education standpoint from an ex- experience standpoint as well but then again the results that you are providing within your clients it's definitely a, an interesting topic for you to speak about because not only do you have that kind of first-hand experience yourself but you you're now bringing your clients down that road as well so this is why of course I wanted to kind of bring you on and and just to give your take on, on these topics yeah now. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, um, like you said, no, go on. What were you gonna say? Yeah, no, I was gonna say. So, I think what we we might do is just kind of give the guys a bit of an insight into what we're gonna speak about today. So, we are gonna cover, you know, nutritional yeah. strategies and adaptations for achieving the result. And then you know, myself and Mark had a very good um, Zoom call yesterday, just when we were talking about the podcast. And our our, our views are, are very similar. So, this is gonna be a quite an interesting one. And we just wanted to basically give you guys the starting points, middle points, and end points to a fitness journey, you know, whether it's stepping on a bodybuilding stage, going through a photo shoot, or just a general population client who wants to get lean for a holiday, build up a bit of muscle tissue, whatever the journey may be, there has to be a start point, a finish point, and an end point, of course. And our kind of goal and vision of, of this podcast was just to outline our approach to each one of those um, to each one of those phases of the dieting phase and just to give you guys an insight into our approach, which is quite interesting because, like I said, we have very similar views on this. So I think it'd be quite, quite interesting to, to kind of bounce these ideas back and forward, you know. So what we'll kind of jump into first, I suppose, is, is that initial phase of, of, a, of, a, of a diet, you know, the initial phase of, of when a client first kind of comes through the door to myself and Mark, you know, what do we do? What do we look out for? So, Mark, do you want to kind of take this one? If you had someone coming in, let's call this maybe, let's maybe we just fire it off with a bit more of an aggressive approach. So say like a, a male or female coming in, potentially looking for a, a photo shoot or to maybe move down the road of a, of a bodybuilding comp- preparation. What would be the first couple of things that you would look for in that very first initial phase? Uh, well, first of all, you would have to kind of look at, are they ready to step into an aggressive phase of, you know, a, a comp prep or a photo shoot? Um, because you know, say for example, like you might look, you might take a look at someone's food when they first come to you, and like they may, they may already be on very low calories and like maybe a lot of cardio, a lot of output. So then you might come to the conclusion that maybe they're not in the position to actually go into a diet phase straight away because their starting point is so poor when it comes to you know their calories. Because say for example, someone comes to you on you know two thousand calories or so. Um, and they're doing like loads of cardio every day. Like there's only so far you can go if that's a starting point. Yeah. You know what I mean? So ideally, like if that happens, you'd want to kind of push calories up, be in a much better start position before you then push on into an aggressive phase. Do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think as well, just what you kind of covered on there is just that initial starting point. You know, like we've potentially seen this so many times when when people begin a dieting phase, the initial thought process is to make this flip of the switch to drive calorie intake down to drive cardio back up again and you know just like what you covered about there it gives 
absolutely no room for any sort of an improvement. Yeah, I totally agree. And um, from my perspective, it's definitely looking at you know food, looking at how they respond to food as well. I think is very important. So for myself, you know, the first maybe four to six weeks of coaching, it's all about just understanding responses. You know, understanding their response to food intake, understanding their response to drops in food, you know, how, how much food can we drop to demand yeah. a response? How much cardio can we implement to demand a response? And just that kind of response period and on understanding and as well, dude, it's about building trust. You know, you know how important it is having a coach who you trust. And at the starting point, I think when you establish that level of trust, the result is always going to be better. Would you agree with that? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, there has to be like... The client has to believe in kind of in your, in your approach. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you have to trust them to kind of do as you say. And once that kind of communication is there from the start, well, then, you know, the opportunities are endless, I suppose. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. And, like, you know, obviously from your end, it's, it's going to be a bit more of an extreme because you're kind of, you, you work a lot with Gem Pop, but some of the guys and girls who were getting ready for the, the shows just before the, yeah. the kind of lockdown hit, the, the transformations were unbelievable. So what I just wanted you to speak a little bit about is that physique analysis. So when you're actually looking at someone's physique, what are some like key red flags and kind of green lights that you would look for when initially analyzing the physique? Um, well, I'll give an example. So say like, say um, a guy came to me I won't, I won't say any names in, in this, obviously, but say a guy came to me looking to prep in in the spring, and he came to me around September. And um, okay. initially, I thought that we needed to add some size because, you know, there was there was room to push. We had time. The, the show wasn't too late, okay. but so we had time until we started dieting to actually push some size. So you have to kind of take into consideration, like, example if they're coming to you for a show prep do they have enough size in order for them to, to you know step on stage then you have to kind of look at what the train is like already what their field is like already and kind of if they if they have what it takes kind of mentally mm. as well to, to push into into more extreme phases so you have to kind of look at you know what the way their field already is the way their train already is then how serious they take it so you have to look into stuff like sleep um, you know, stress levels, every, all that comes into consideration. Um, but again, you kind of you know we're looking at someone at the very start. Like if say someone comes to you like twelve weeks out from the show and says, like, "I want to compete in twelve weeks," you have to be realistic with someone. You can't be afraid to say like, "Look, I don't think I'm going to be ready in twelve weeks." Look, you're either holding too much body fat, yeah. or I think you need to improve this and improve that before you actually push on to to aim for that goal. Mm. You know, so. Again, I think that comes back to the start when you said you have like it's getting that trust with your clients. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, so if if you can if you can explain that to a client and they, they understand where you're coming from, then you can set a plan in place to go forward. So you know what phases you have to go through in order to reach that end goal. Yeah, absolutely. And I I couldn't agree more. You know, just I think that that analysis of the physique is so important because that in respect is gonna determine what avenue that client is going to go down, you know, just what we spoke about yesterday, you know, that kind of prime build and transform phase. If we have a, yes. a, a male client who is very lean and has muscle, but not enough muscle to push into an aggressive phase, just like what you speak about, he has to then move into that more of a, of a building phase. If we have that client, the, the prime phase, I like to call it, where they have a good bit of muscle, but they also have a lot of body fat. So they would have to maybe move towards maybe more of a, a sustainable a dieting phase to get that weight off and then transition them into that aggressive approach. And then you, of yeah. course, have the like the ideal client who has a good amount of muscle, body fat, but not not an extreme amount, enough that we could put them into an aggressive phase right now and they'd hit the ground running. And I think for for anyone listening in, you know, just that self-identification is so important because that is what's going to determine which avenue you need to go down to have a successful yeah. journey because you probably understand as well. There's been many people out there that have been pushed into wrong journeys and they've either fell way short because they were potentially in a, in a prime phase where body fat levels were too high and they were pushed into an, an aggressive phase and they just couldn't have that long term 25 to 30 week push to get them in, to get them into a lean level yeah. of, of, of body composition. And like, if there's any coaches listening, that's a, it's a very good take on point. What me and Mark just spoke about, you know, that just, identification process 
of the physique it's so important and I think maybe off the back end of that we could potentially talk about the actual setup of of nutrition you know how how would you set up somebody in that initial phase so in inside this could you cover as well because I'm really interested to notice their like expenditure levels so like their need or their cardio and then that initial phase of, of a diet yes yeah, so basically like when someone comes to me i want to know like i want to know exactly what what their food intake is like at the moment what the calorie intake is like what the output is like okay and say i'll then like say for example i have their baseline calories i know what they're they're intaking and um, like you know every day etc then i can kind of work off that see what calories you're intaking and then I, I know where to go from that so say for example we're looking to go into a gaining phase and then um, they're in a good position to gain for example so if i get their baseline calories that they're already taken then i all i would do is i will look at um you know to, to push that calorie them calories up you know so a good starting point is like that anyone can take away from this you know like if they're looking to set up their, their nutrition is what i like to do is for a girl, I like to aim for um, one pound, uh, one gram of pro, sorry, a gram of protein per pound body weight. Mm-hmm. And then for males, it's either, I, I like it a higher end, so 1.2 grams to 1.5 grams of protein per pound. Yeah. So that's my, my starting position. So obviously, you know, there's four grams, four calories in a gram of protein. So say you have 200 grams of protein, that's, you know, 800 calories mm-hmm. gone. And that's the start. Of, that's the start, you know. So if you're setting up, I'd always aim for, you know, your protein. Set up your protein first, yeah. um, and then the carbs and fats, that can come under. I mainly go with, yeah, as we know, a lot of it does come down to calories in, calories out. So the carbs and fats can fall under kind of the preference of the client. Yeah, I think you're right there as well. Yeah. You know, so if if a client kind of or if they have a diet already that kind of is low in carbohydrates, well, then you don't mind maybe, you know, pulling the carbs back and having higher fats. But if someone, you know, needs carbs to yeah. be able to maybe adhere better, you're going to have to have high carbs in there for them or else, because again, it all comes back to adherence. Yeah. So if they can't adhere to the plan, it, we're not get, we're going to get nowhere in the first place. Yeah, and that, it's that level of, that level of communication that that comes in, in in the early doors as well of that trust process, you know, understanding like if, if you can give somebody a, a food plan that they love, that they enjoy, give somebody a food plan of foods that they like and preferences that they like, what you just spoke about, if someone prefers high carb, give them high carb, if they prefer low carb, give them low carb. And I think that's, that's a really good point because that's playing towards the client's needs, not your wants. You know, your yes. wants could potentially be to drive carbohydrate intake up because that's what of course me and you enjoy but that may not be what the, the client enjoy it's a good take-home point yeah just to really focus on what, um, what the client needs and not what the want of the, the coach yeah i think there's a few mis- misconceptions as well i think clients think that you know before going to the coach the coach is just going to give them a diet you know oh, maybe a generic diet or so yeah but like people should realize that it is important for a coach to tailor the diet to, to suit your needs you know, that, that is the main purpose, like I said, or else adherence is going to be very poor and you're not going to be able to stick to it. It's going to be no fun at all. Absolutely, and it's preference. It all boils down to when the client comes in, the client should have a, a preference list of foods they enjoy and it's then down to the coach yeah. to, to create that balance of energy based off the based off that preference. I think that's a, a fantastic yeah. way to cover it up. And then in regards to in regards to, to cardio and, and neat levels and just overall expenditure, what would kind of be your first steps in, in, in this whole process in the, in regards to expenditure. Yeah, so say I wanted to, I wanted to um, dig a you know dig a further calorie deficit by using maybe cardio. Um, I would start. Uh, depends on what they're doing already. So say for example, so, no someone's doing no cardio. I'd li- I'd like to start off on maybe you know four twenty minute sessions per week yeah. of cardio. Um, I don't really mind what they do cardio on. I, it's it's a tool. Yeah to use to burn calories so i really don't mind and i just all out. i ask is that yeah I, I get them to keep keep it consistent so whatever they kind of start on keep that like method consistent through um and then as the weeks go on like if you want to you know if kind of if we start on progress then you can look at um digging into calories or maybe increasing the expenditure to put us into a further calorie deficit yeah. so um 
you know, maybe my next step from the, the 20 minutes, four times a week, maybe, you know, 30 minutes, five times a week. Yeah. No. So I think a big mistake people make when they, when they diet is, um, putting in way too much cardio and slashing calories way too soon. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Um, I think it, a slow and steady approach. Like if you make a change to cardio, like if you, if you start off with your cardio like that and you have a certain calorie um, tag, okay. Um, you have to give that time to actually work. Mm. So sometimes that will not work over a week period, like a week. Sometimes mm. that will take two weeks or so to actually, yeah. for your body to actually respond. And then it starts to move. So I think it's key not to start making manipulations too early just because things aren't moving fast for you. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And it just boils down to that minimal dose, maximum effect, doesn't it? You know, trying to get the yeah. best possible outcome out of using the least amount of tools that we possibly can. You know, exactly. what you just said there is, is you know, when when people have come to us both before, we were both in this position where they maybe have worked with a different coach and it's, you know, they throw the kitchen sink at it from square one. And I actually listened to a podcast a couple of weeks ago and there's a very good analogy used about these whole processes is when we start these processes, think about playing a, a game of cards and you start the deck with 52 cards in the deck. And if you drop calories down immediately and, you know, increase cardio, what you've done is you just basically hand it over your complete deck and you've nothing else yeah. to play with. So I, I mean, myself and yourself both agree with this, that it's it's one card at a time. You know, one very small variable that will change the effective energy balance at a time and then let that variable set in. Like what you spoke about, if it doesn't work for one week of cardio, let that play out for another week. You know, let it set in. Yeah. Let the principle of adaptation be overruled here and try and have that minimal dose maximum effect. I, I couldn't agree more. And I think, you know, just bringing back to that kind of reference of, use your cards wisely as well. You know, it, just because this week you had a, a potential stall in weight or a stall in body composition, it doesn't mean you have to make a change. And like what you just said, if, if the cardio doesn't work yeah. this week, it's going to work next week or it's going to work the week after. And it just boils down to, again, adherence. And that, again, boils down to the preference of how the plan has been set up. I think um, having a coach by our side for that is very important, you know, because <laughs> personally... You, maybe you're the same. Like if I was to kind of coach myself, it's very easy to get caught up in, you know, trying to push two herds. You know, yeah. you see a little change, but you want to see more. Hmm. So I think it's very important for, you know, the coach is important for the adherence part of it. So, and the accountability. So if a client starts to panic because they're not changing, you know, it's up to you to, you know, calm them down and use your expertise to explain like that, why we're doing things and like why we're, maybe changing things as slow as we are absolutely and again what we do is we, we are myself and yourself both focus extremely on body composition and at the end product we both want our clients to have the most muscle they can with the least amount of, of body fat that they can and i think we would both agree on this that when you rock bottom calories and increase cardio so much to start the potential starting point for that weight loss to come off majority could be muscle mass just due to the fact of how that adjustment has been set in place and how aggressive that adjustment was and what you just spoke about there you know using those small changes that can prevent that can prevent a lot of muscle loss as well because when we use that small and steady approach the weight loss that will come off it's a lot more sustainable for fat loss as opposed to that initial chunk of muscle and glycogen that would have come away with that very aggressive yes. approach to start yeah yeah uh... I think if people, I think people come in with a goal and they get so caught up in the goal and, and achieving that fast, you know, people want results fast. 60, so like, I think if, weeks, yeah. yeah, I think if people kind of maybe sat back and took their time and said, right, I don't, I don't mind how long this takes me. I'm yeah. going to get there in the end. Man, they're going to look much, much better than if they tried to do it in eight weeks. Yeah, that's what I was, like you said, they're going to, I was just going to ask you. Know, how long do you want also, yeah. I was just going to ask you, you know, do, do you do you use that effect? Because I use that effect with my clients of, you know, I set targets of an image and targets of a level of body composition we're going to achieve, not a time frame. I think it's very important that myself and yourself both agree on that, that, you know, if you said, a, okay, we're going to get this done in 12 weeks, you have 12 weeks to finish this transformation. But that's when you start to rush things because you think, okay, I've only really got three months here to get this done and I have to be fast and aggressive. But like what you just said, it's we, when we get there, we get there. It doesn't matter how fast, how slow. All that matters yeah. is the end product of what we're aiming for is that 
muscular fullness but being very lean i think that's an ideal scenario in all finishing transformations and like what you said it's a slow and steady process and when it happens it happens don't set a time restriction on it it's very important it's a very good take home yeah. as well yeah very good uh, take people home. like like it has to be it's going to be more fun as well and maybe less difficult if it's more sustainable and kind of a prolonged period rather than trying to just do a crash diet yeah. you know in the eight weeks yeah so. absolutely and again when, when, when you embark on these coaching journeys it's, it's a it's an educational route as well you know the longer you and i both notice the longer with a client a coach the more you learn and when they them small adjustments come into play and when you're really taking your time you can dive a lot deeper into you know how can we fix your sleep how can we fix your stress management how can we fix you know your resting heart rate and when you really dive into those that's when you get the full bang for your book out of a, out of a coach instead of yeah. him throwing the kitchen sink at it every week at check-in and driving calories down and driving cardio up because of course that's not going to yeah. be sustainable for anyone and just kind of on, on that topic what i just maybe wanted to push this into is when you're making the adaptations to plan so you know let's really get into this now when, when you are actually you know, looking at a client and saying, okay, there's a male here. He didn't lose weight for the last two weeks. I need to impose that said principle, you know, a specific adaptation that's going to impose demand on his physique. Do you have like a, some sort of a calorie number that you like to subtract or add in cardios or how, how do you program that? Um, it's different for each client, but what I, what I usually like to do is I like to kind of set a protein and fat yeah. And then I will, I will mainly pull pull from carbs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. and so again, it depends on the weight of the clients, on their gender. You know what I mean? Yeah. But say, for example, like, um, you know, a decent weight male, I would maybe pull, you know, fifty grams of carbs, which is two hundred calories. Calories, yeah. yeah in in to, to like to create a a change. Yeah. Um, and then. Like two hundred, like two hundred drops, is, I think, is more than enough to cre to create a change. If you yeah. dig any deeper than that, um, you will get the change. But then again, that's one less care to you as you as going forwards. Okay. And, and at what cost is that going to come at as well? Yeah, that could because that that extra drop, you know, that could affect sleep. That could increase stress levels. Um, you know, so it's not always like more is better. You know, yeah. like keep on pushing. Is, is better it's a you know again it, it just comes back to just be patient yeah slow slowly if like things yeah I'm, I'm the same myself you know i think i i just have kind of just based on numbers i work off but again it can be very different for every client and um, for males about that 250 calorie marker i'd either add 250 calories onto the day of cardio or or make that subtraction yeah. of of calories and for females to be a little bit less to be kind of 125 to 175 either that subtraction of calories. And again, what you said, you know, I think for, for both males and females, trying to keep protein and fat levels as high as we possibly can for as long as we possibly can is, is only yeah. a positive, you know, both are extremely satiating and macronutrients, you know, when you start to bring carbohydrate levels down, the two of those being high plus a high kind of fruit and veg intake should elicit that feeling of running on like lower carbohydrates, not low carb, but lower than, than before. And, I think for, for anyone listening now, those numbers that me and Mark just spoke about are very good take-homes that, again, you could kind of implement into your own journey now. Um, and it's an easy transition to make and it's something that's not complicated to do. It's quite an easy transition. Like Mark said, if you pulled 50 grams of carbs, that's 200 calories. That's a very easy thing to do over your day. Just pull something as small as uh, as, as 50 grams of carbs. And just kind of on the, on the back end of that, I think we definitely touch on good um, points there. Would you be looking for any kind of red flags inside of a check-in to use that said principle. So is there anything when you're looking at a check-in sheet or looking at a client that you would look for to say, okay, like he or she needs change now at this moment? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. So say like you look at all the, you know, all the feedback you've got, you've got off the clients. So if they've kind of started, like, again, it's not always down to the scale way. So, Maybe like if their if their scale weight has kind of plateaued and there's no change or improvement in body composition, then you have to look at maybe like you have to look at their sleep markers and their stress markers, etc. And if they are in, in a good place and their sleep is good and their stress is good and all these kind of markers are in a good position, well then you have to think, okay, 
maybe it is time now to pull to push on a bit, a bit harder. Whereas yeah. if you know if stress is high or sleep is poor and these markers may be skewed a little bit, then you may be like, okay, maybe we don't need to push. Maybe we just need to get these in check first. Mm. Absolutely, because. From from a from an internal perspective, you and I both know that if stress is extremely elevated and we have that level of of, of sympathetic dominance, that of course digestive function is going to be so skewed that even the food that they're eating, it's not going to be digested properly. So the balance of energy then in return could be massively off. So yeah, like what you said, just trying to trying to fix the those biofeedback markers initially before making that change. And again, that's going to boil down to the slow and steady approach. You know, at, at your check ins. Yeah. If your coach is focusing on, you know, improving sleep or improving stress, it's not because they don't want to make a change to the plan. It may be because you're not suitable for that change at the moment. You know, you have to always, I think, play play to the tune to your body. And you know, I always use an analogy. You know, when you fix the internal, you'll then produce a better result on the external. So, like you said, when you fix yes. the the sleep and, and stress, that has a, a huge impact then on their physique and on how their physique is presented and looked. Because, like I said. When, when digestive function is, is proper, you know, how you're going to absorb and, and transform those nutrients could have a massive impact on energy balance in, 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 yeah. in some way, shape or form, you know? Um, you know, I think that's, that's really good kind of from that adaptation um, kind of process and, and how we like to make those uh, kind of adjustments to, to the plan. And, you know, just when we're kind of talking about these more long-term approaches, would there be like a, a certain time frame that you would like to just leave plans as is? You know, if, if a client is making phenomenal progress, are you just happy to leave them and let them go? Or do you like to kind of change things up just to keep them a little bit interested? No, mate, honestly, like I've had clients that like we've ran like maybe 10 weeks straight through yeah. and every week, every single week they're getting better, they're improving. Yeah. And like, you see, it's very easy for a coach to like, to be like, okay, I have to make a change here. Or this yeah. client's gonna get bored, but Absolutely. like man, I think if you're a coach that knows kind of not like understands the clients, you will not make an unnecessary change for the sake of it. And I think if the client is progressing and changing as well, they'll realize that as well. Because like, I think a lot of people fail to realize that you like you're not only investing in a coach for like for them to change a plan, you're investing in them for their expertise and their their eye, you know, their experience in, yeah. in what they're looking for. Exactly. I think that's such a such an important take home note that you don't, and especially because I know there is going to be a lot of coaches because a lot of my clients are coaches that are going to be listening to this. Don't be afraid to to leave the plan as is. You know, don't don't be afraid to not check, not change their their plans, their check ins. And I know from a client's perspective, it can nearly come across thinking that the coach is being lazy. But like what Mark just spoke about, if it's not broke, you do not have to try and fix it. And sometimes maybe you trying to fix that plan and trying to keep it aggressive and trying to keep it, you know, spicy for the clients, maybe stalling the progress a little bit more in a sense. Cause you know what you spoke about, Mark, yeah. if, if you're trying to keep it slow and steady and allow the adaptations to come in when they need to be present and you're consistently changing the plan, well, maybe you're just overruling the set principle completely for the sake of trying to keep it interesting for the clients, you know? Yeah. And I think like, you can't be afraid of maybe the client getting annoyed or leaving it because yeah. you're not changing things up. Like our job here is to, you know, make it like get give them what they want. They want to make it. They want to make a transformation. They want to make a difference. So it's our job to get them there. Yeah. So if they're not happy with us not making changes, like we're just doing what they asked. We're trying to get exactly. them to where they want. So exactly. And I was about like, and you you have to as well look at it from the client's perspective, and you have to understand that from the client's oh, yeah. perspective. But yeah. again, it's going to just boil down to what we spoke about from the initial starting point to trust. You know, what we I said, if, if the client trusts you enough and if you have a, a positive impact on them in regards to getting them to trust you and the communication is correct, you should, you should be able to have a check-in and, and not even speak about food at times. And in, in a couple of minutes, we'll definitely dive into the more frequency of check-ins and when we kind of make that um the latter stage but for now i think that's a really good take home it's just if the trust is there and if the communication is there like you said you can run 10 weeks and the client should be nearly happy to keep the plan because you you and i both know when you get into that last phase of a diet you want food to be as high as possible at all times yeah. i remember in the 2016 prep for the, the mr ireland when i used to have a bagel before i went to bed 
And every check-in with Brian Hickey, I was praying, praying <laughs> that he wouldn't take the bagel away from me. And I think I got to like three weeks out and he had to take a bagel away. And I always remember thinking back to that, like he could have took that away at, at any point. You know, we, we could have been eight weeks out and I wasn't losing weight. And he could say, right, pull that out. But for the sake of just staying yeah. adherable to the plan, it stayed in. It stayed in right yeah. until three weeks out. And for myself, I understand that try to keep those things in a client's diet for as long as you possibly can because in the latter end, it, me- it means a lot. Like you- You'll understand as well how many preps you've done. Yeah. Yeah. If you can keep high field as long as you possibly can, that's a yeah. win-win. And look, if, if a client is coming to you and each check-in, like you're not changing anything, that means like if you're not changing a client's plan, they should look at that as in like, okay, I'm doing everything right. I'm, yeah. I'm progressing here. So exactly, it should be yeah. a positive that you you know what I mean? That's why people should look at it. If, if you don't have to make a, a change, yeah. that's a positive thing because what you're doing is working and you are progressing. Yeah. And again, that's, that's again, just going to boil down to communication, right? You know, how, how we communicate, yeah. like what me and you spoke about yesterday, having the, the video responses to, to check-ins and, and consultations to give them that emotional feel to let them know that like you are doing yeah. a good job, you are progressing in the plan yeah. and that you don't need to make that, you don't need to make that kind of, the consistency of change and consistently trying to keep things spicy yeah. and you, you have to just let these plans set in place, let your body become I accustomed. Think, I think it's important to like, let them know we're not making a change. Yes. You know right. what I mean? Like, Very important. like you said, to, to build the trust because it like, it's important to tell them why you are making a change. But then if you're not, it, it again, it is important to let them know why, why you're not. And potentially more important. Yeah more important to, to let them know you know why why they have to be more consistent and as well pl- plans are only as effective as they're executed and if you can execute a plan to perfection you should like you said you should be able to keep a client on the same plan for you know eight ten weeks and if they're executing that plan and if the the balance of energy is correct and if they're losing weight consistently why, why change it you know i think i think that's a really interesting one to now maybe we should progress into you know the latter ends so you know if we have people that are at that you know eight week six week four five week out marker from their finish point then we're, we're getting to that point where we can kind of look visually and say okay you're at this finish point like you need me a lot more now what transitions do you make in the last phase in regards to coaching and just from that kind of mental moral support frequency of check-ins what would you do in that last in that last phase um i would change check-ins over like I'd, I'd make them check in more frequently so like if they're checking in once a week I'd, I'd say right I want you to check in with me you know say they're checking in on a Friday I'd be like okay I want you to check in with me on a Tuesday as well yeah. um, and then obviously the closer we get it, it, nearly be, it will nearly become every day yeah. because you really have to monitor how they're feeling how they're looking because things when we get into them latter stages ch- things change so fast yeah. so it's very important to monitor and see how we're progressing and as well, even when I'm not meant to check in, man, I think it's very important to like, you know, if you haven't heard from them, etc. Like, and even though it's not checking day, I find it is important to check in on the motion emotionally because you know how Absolutely. difficult them latter stages can be, Absolutely. and how easy it is to slip up. Yeah, and those and those check ins when they become more frequently, like you and I both know, there could be days where you won't even look at their scale weight or you won't look at their physique pictures. You just want to know how they are. You know, you just want to know, like, how are you holding up today? Like, how, emotionally, how are you today? Are you, are, you, are you trying to manage your stress correctly? Are you trying to, you know, manage your, your biofeedback, your sleep? Is everything kind of clutching at straws here? Are we yeah. really trying to keep these levels in check? And I think that's a, this is a good kind of topic to speak about because those frequency of check-ins, again, speaking about trust, how much trust did I build between the coach and the client? Yeah. It's humongous, right? Like, and, like, man, sometimes, like, if – Sometimes I'd, I'd be messaging the clients in the latter stages and like I'm actually annoying them because they don't even want to talk. Like, you know what I mean? They're fine doing their own thing, but yeah. it's, it's very important for me to, to push it on them, you know, and make yeah. sure they are okay. Because you're, you're um, offering them the, the level of, of reassurance and that level of, you know, keeping the consistency there. Because you, you and I both understand that I think it takes a very driven individual to be motivated all the time. And motivation can can spike and motivation can drop and when motivation drops the potential for them to slip off plan is going to be higher so as the coach consistently keeping that frequent check-ins that's going to eliminate that completely right do you agree because yeah yeah definitely because like if they're you know if they're getting maybe a random text off their 
maybe if they're struggling in the, in the latter stages and then they get a random text off their coach, yeah. their motivation straight away, you know, we'll, we'll get it, we'll get a bump up. Yeah. And again, it will enable them to push on for the next few days and adhere to the plan. Absolutely. So it's very important. Yeah. And you know yourself, if even the two of us now, if, if we're checking in with air coaches on a Friday, come Wednesday, you say to yourself, right, okay, look, I'm just going to be like super strict for like Wednesday towards the Friday, just to make sure that everything is like, is there. And when you, when you have those frequent check-ins with them, whether it's every day, every second day, every third day, they're consistently in their mind thinking, okay, I have to be, I have to be on point here because I need to check in. And that just builds this level yeah. of, of resilience and this level of just comfort within that coaching approach that you're going to get to the finish line in ease. And I think when, when you leave a client for too long and communication has gone from, you know, they're checking on a Friday to checking on the following Friday, or if you're a one-to-one -one coach, if you see them on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but you don't speak to them Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, if they're in that latter end of a, of a very aggressive dieting phase, the chances of them slipping up and going off plan, it's going to be a hell of a lot higher. So communication yeah. is, is so important. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, you, you've pretty much nailed it there, man. It, it's so important. Like, and I think, it, it, like you said, if you don't check in and like, if you don't, if you, if you have been as a coach in these latter stages, you will, you will empathize. You'll be able to kind of relate to what they're feeling. Yeah. You know, so you know, you know what they need and Absolutely. what support they need. And, and as well, I think not, not in all cases, but definitely in certain cases, the need to move around the variable of food can potentially be a lot higher in that latter end. You know, just a, a prime example here. I'm getting a, a girl, Sarah Jane, ready for a photo shoot next week. And we know her body so well at this point because nearly for six weeks now, we've been checking in every day. So every single morning, she sends me over physique pictures, scale weight, her HRV reading and sleep score reading from the night before. Because I know that she needs that level of, of comfort and that level of communication to strive. And she has strived. And we know her body so well that we can spike her up to a high carb day. And two days later, she will drop her weight down to a new low weight every single time. Without, without a shadow of a doubt. If I wanted to get her down to the lowest weight she'll ever be in, all I have to do is spike her food up. But that just boils down to just understanding the client. And in that latter yeah. end, those small adjustments to the plan become crucial in getting them to that level of, of, of lean body composition that I need to be at, you know? Yeah. Um, and like you said, man, that comes down to communication and trust the client. Like the more, as a client, the more feedback and the more, you know, the, the more open you are with your coach, the more your coach is going to be able to learn about you and, you know, the better your results going to be because they can make them small changes. Absolutely. You no, know, so. Yeah, 100%. And, and those small changes can have such an impact on, on, the final, on the final product. And, you know, for, especially for coaches listening, if they're in that latter end and you're making changes once a week or potentially, you know, trying to not make changes in those very, very last stages, I think it's important to consistently make change when change needs to be made. Because if they've been at the diet so long, if they're in that really aggressive phase, they should be like continuing the process and nearly that should be the fastest time that body fat will be coming off and weight will be coming down, right? So you know it yourself, Mark, when you get to that last kind of four or five weeks out from, from a show or four or five weeks out from an yeah. aggressive diet, weight can change so quickly and it can stall so quickly yeah. and it can drop so quickly. So that's why those frequent check-ins and, and frequent communication, you're just consi consistently staying ahead of the race in regards to, you know yourself, dude, you'll know your client's bodies like clockwork. You'll know that, I haven't spiked their food in four days. I can guarantee that on Friday, if I haven't spiked Sarah's food, she's going to stall in her weight loss on Friday. And it's going to be a change in body composition. Yeah. You'll know it. Like It's like you know their body better than they do at those later stages, right? Yeah, man. Like Sometimes like I'll even, like, in a check-in, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of predict to a client like, yeah, what like, I think is going to happen. In the, how often, in the how often are you right? Nearly 90% yeah. of the time. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, and it's because they're, they're so open and honest and you've tracked everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? So then when you have all that kind of data built up, then you know kind of what's, what way it's going to react. Absolutely. And, you know, I think just kind of judging off the back end of that, I think we should definitely speak about 
the the post. So of course, you know, coming towards that latter end, myself and Mark obviously agreed on that. It's, it boils down to consistent check-ins. It boils down to making the adaptations when they need to be made. But once the kind of we've hit the finish line, and now we're kind of actually now let me regress back a little bit. So one thing that we both agreed on yesterday yeah. was was health markers being slightly skewed during that last phase. Do you just want to touch on that a little bit? Yeah. Um coming in like if you're going into an aggressive phase of a court, you know, for a photo shoot or a contest prep, etc., um, you have to realise that it's not necessarily healthy. Like you're not going Never to be again. you're not going to be in optimal health levels of health. So, you know, if you were to get blood work done in, in the latter stages, like it, you would see marker skewers. And then even outside of blood work, like in regards to sleep. Absolutely. Stress like sleep in the last in the last kind of push, man, is you know yourself, and um, it's it's extremely poor in most cases. Yeah. Um, and like there are ways, you know, we we can kind of try and improve that, but mm. at the end of the day, it is what it is. Towards the end, it is gonna suffer, and at low levels of body fat, it's kind of inev- inevitable, isn't it? Just to let the the elevation of stress and the elevation of sympathetic dominance that's going to be present, it's inevitable, like you said, that sleep is going to be skewed. But I think why as well, myself and yourself, do you get such great results and have a good reputation for client health and care is because in the early stages, how important it is to to focus on, on getting optimal sleep and optimal stress and optimal digestion so that when you yeah. transition into a latter end, if they take yeah. a hit, it's already twice as good as it was before. So if you have someone with a sleep score reading of 50 and you up them to the like early stages of 90s or late 80s in the sleep score reading of Fitbit, if that drops down to 75 in the latter end, they've still improved from where they were at the very start of, of your diet. And yeah. it just boils down to that level of stress. And even though myself and yourself both hugely focus on stress management for clients, when you're at that latter end and body fat levels are so low, it is going to be skewed. And that's just what I want to touch on because it's something that people don't really speak about, but me and Mark both agreed that it needs to be spoken about. And it needs to be understood that in the last stages, it's okay for your sleep to fall off. It's okay for you know stress management to fall off. It's okay for digestion to be not 100% optimal because look at the position your body's in, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you're right to bring that up. That, that's a great point. Um, yeah. And as well, then it comes down to even even the emotional side of things, man. Towards the end, um, yeah, you know, some emotional roller, a roller coaster for for most people, you know, Absolutely. because there's so many highs, so many lows, and these are things like you said, people need to to realise that at the end, it's not it's not it's not all fun, you know, and we we do have to go through these stages. Yeah, man, I couldn't agree but more. That, again, again, having the coach there with, is going to get you through. You know, you have that emotional support along the way. Yeah, and as well, I think this keeps regret regressing back to the start. But you know, when when you're looking at a client and assessing a client, I think it's very important as well to assess their emotional level and support system from their home, their work environment, whatever it may be. And that's going to boil down to that initial phase of of, of analysis. And you know, if if a client is in a relationship where it's very unsupportive, if their job don't give them the support that they need if they are like a a single mom with one or two kids and she doesn't have the time to push this like it's not the right time to push that and again that's going to boil down to the that analysis at the start of you know can they afford to take that big hit because at the end of the day what's the hit for you know it's of course achieving a level of body composition is fantastic that 90 percent of people have tried and failed but if it's going to come at a cost of causing you damage to mental health it's not worth doing right a hundred percent. Like, yeah. if again, like I said, it goes it regresses back to the start again. Like when you're setting someone up, like you have to make sure everything's in check. So you know, physical health, mental health, finances. You know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Work life, relationships, yeah. everything. And if not, if all that isn't for and like going into like an aggressive phase, like you said, whatever it is, photo shoot, comp prep, mm. because it's not easy. So if things in your life that I mentioned are skewed or you are struggling in them areas, it's not going to get any better during, during that time. It's only going to get worse, you know what I mean? So. And having that level of, of support, especially from, from home environments, you know, you and I both know 
how important that is, like how, how supportive your parents are me out of me, how supportive your parents are of you. I'm sure they support me as well. Um, <laughs> how much like my partner, Amy supports me. It's, it's to make yeah. or break at times. And when that die gets hard, of course your coach can be there for you, but your coach is not there 24 seven. And, and having that support system at home, it's not only important during the prep, it's also very important after the prep. And that's what I wanted to speak about now is, is that post dieting, like emotional support, how to get that emotional transition, how to improve, yeah. how to then improve those markers that we just said are skewed. So I, what I just want you to maybe take me through, dude, is, you know, when, when one of your clients finishes up with those aggressive phases, you know, what are the, the kind of the baby steps you take to get them back to that level of normality again? Yes. Yeah, so again, every, everyone is different. So you're going to take different approaches for, for each client. So maybe if you're looking at, if someone comes out the back end of a show and they are really fuel focused and maybe they don't have the discipline anymore to control their fluids up out of a show, you know, I, I like, I like to kind of reverse slowly. So I'll increase calories like incrementally, mm-hmm. but if there's maybe a client who, who, needs that field you know what i mean they mentally they can't deal with it anymore they can't yeah. deal with discipline you know so i i you are just gonna have to bump them calories straight back up to maintenance or above mm. um or else if you don't and you try and do it slowly they're gonna binge anyway and they're going to end up going off plan and it's gonna go in a downward spiral yeah. so you're better off to get them back to a good kind of mental state a physical state and mm. um, just to get them calories straight back up you know and but then again it's a when you do that, it's important to, again, be there for them emotionally because they have to realize that their stage physique or their photo shoot physique is only for one day, you know, yeah. and they are going to gain yeah. body fat. They are going to gain body fat. And a lot of people don't really yeah. realize this. So, you know, they can get, like, you know yourself, post-show is, is much, much harder than um, pre-contest. Mm. You no, know? so after the dieting phase, like, it is important to kind of, explain to the client that it is okay to put on body fat it is okay to not look the way you did the goal now is to improve focus on kind of performance in the gym trying to like improve them markers and then when we increase the field and stuff straight away um sleep starts to improve cortisol levels start to decrease mm. and then they start to resume normal life it doesn't happen overnight as you know but it is a it is a process over like you know a good few weeks to, to start to feel back to normal yeah and, and having that having that transition kind of nearly mm-hmm. set in stone before it happens you know having the client again boys and the communication to, for them to understand that you know post your pictures you should never let a client walk out your door and never speak to them again i think it's yeah. so important to have that plan of attack set in place that when they finish their pictures girl, i can't i don't really think i've ever had, had a client who has took their pictures and walked to the door and I've never really seen them again because I understand how important it is to improve those health markers again, you know, get their sleep back to optimal levels, yeah. get their stress management back to optimal levels. And that's going to re- require bringing body weight back up. And that's going to require yeah. bringing them back to a state of that like homeostatic range where they're not losing weight, they're not gaining weight, they're just at that pain point of, of maintenance. You know, let the body weight start to increase nice and slowly. But that's going to, I think, provide better emotional support for the client as well because you know if you just bring a client in and give them a 15 to 20 week dieting phase it's like you're just winding up this tension band and it's just winding and winding and you're getting to the end and when you push them out that door that tension is just going to go and yeah. that that release is going to come from eating food intake that release is going to come from you know dramatically spiraling up in body weight but not only body weight but body fat like how, how susceptible are you going to be to gain fat you're going to be post um post your aggressive cut from yeah. having bad food intake right it's so important to have that plan and plan and plan of action in place to have that emotional support ready for them as soon as they finish and having a plan to say okay if you finish your photo shoot on friday you're working with me for another 10 weeks here to make sure that at the end of that 10 weeks you're in such a prime position to just think off on your own or do whatever you want to do, but everything is going to be brought back to, to normality again. Yeah. And I think again, goes back to the start. When someone comes to you, it's important to explain that to them that yeah. you can't just expect to go in and get to this kind of goal you have. Mm-hmm. It is going to take work to get out of that as well. 
or else you're gonna mm -hmm. if you don't you're gonna leave yourself in a poor position mentally physically health markers you know what i mean everything's going to be, be skewed because you don't approach it the right way after it and kind of bring everything back up slowly and get back to where you were before yeah absolutely and it, it just again we keep referring back to the start it's buzzing the communication and and having having that level of communication inside of the the consultation or the first time first couple of weeks you're starting to work with them to to say to them you know look it's got, this is going to come in in phases you know you're going to have your initial phase at the start where it's all about adjusting to the plan and, and understanding your body you're going to have that stage in the middle where we're making those adjustments to bring body fat down you're going to have that stage at the end where or the phase at the end where we're transitioning into the more frequent check-ins we're hitting the finish line we're getting ready to finish up but then the last and arguably the most important phase is that post and how you handle the client throughout that post phase and I think this is why, as well, when we're speaking about how aggressive these plans are, I think a lot of people push aggressive plans down avenues where they don't need to go. Like if you imagine, say, a photo shoot preparation, and then you have a photo shoot or a bodybuilding show, and you have maybe six to eight weeks after that where you can transition out and make them more optimal functioning from a health perspective versus letting them do a bodybuilding show and in the next week fly to Ibiza and have a week holiday with their friends. There's, there's the margin for error and margin for something to go wrong is humongous, right? Yeah, and like, you know yourself, there are going to be some some clients who who will do that and who want to do yeah. that. And, you know, that's their choice. We, we can only kind of give our input on that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, by, by, by doing that and kind of going off on your own back, you know yourself, you can leave yourself in such a poor position or else, or else you can transition out of it and leave yourself self in an ideal position to kind of push on, progress, and be be back to your normal self, yeah. You know, so it, it's 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 extremely important, and it's important to like not just throw it out the window, and like you say, then jump on a flight and just throw yeah. it all away, yeah. because you're gonna come back. You're gonna you might go over there, and you're gonna be great. I'm in great shape. I feel great. You're gonna come back, yeah. and you're gonna be mentally and physically destroyed because you're gonna look at yourself, and you're gonna look worse than you did before you even started your diet, yeah. and it's only two weeks, three weeks later. Yeah, you can it can it can ruin people, and again, I think that just that boils down to the the approach. You know, of course, go, going on a, on a holiday, you can get in phenomenal shape, but doing it at a very slow and steady pace. That when you go on holidays, you can lift those restrictions away, and no major implications are going to come off the back end of that. Whereas if the approach was extremely strict, as soon as you let that kind of let that release off and and take the foot off the gas and put the car in neutral and let you just drive yourself, the margin for error or margin for health markers to be skewed is going to be so, so large. That it's, not, it's not worth the risk, right? It's, it's not worth the risk. Yeah. So if, if, you, if you are planning on, you know, going away or planning on, on doing a diet yourself, just always remember what's the, the outcome at the end going to be. You know, if it's a holiday, is it worth pushing an extremely aggressive approach for a holiday when you don't have that time post to be very cautious of the actions that you make to bring you back to that range where you're healthy again. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I, I totally agree, man. You've kind of, you've nailed it there. Mm. Um, yeah, and people, I think more people just need to be aware of that, especially if they are, you know, doing their own thing and doing their own diet. And whatever about physical implications that that can occur from that, mm. it's it's the mental side. People don't. Don't think about it either, yeah. because like again, like I said a couple of minutes ago, when all that is over and done with, and you're back to what you looked like yeah. um, before you even started your diet, and it's only three weeks after you finished. Physically, okay, things things are off, but mentally as well, it's going to really have a, have an effect. Hmm. So, it's really something to think about. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's a probably a, a, maybe a good 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 kind of finish point uh, for the for the podcast dude was was just kind of you know having that plan of you know a start a middle a finish but then that aftercare as well which is which is so important and you know I'm really happy that we we kicked off the the elite coaching podcast with this episode because I think we gave so much information there and information that people can take it upon themselves you know I know we spoke a lot about coaching and coaching practice but we we're also directly kind of pushing that towards the, the general population clients of, of when you coach yourself you are your own coach and there's a lot of take-homes of of rights and wrongs i think to do um when, when you're coaching yourself and you know 
just from from my end, and um, you know, I'm, I'm extremely grateful for for you coming on today, Mark. I'm, you know, we've been kind of we've been back and forward about this quite quite a while, and you know, I'm really excited to to launch this podcast, and I couldn't have I've, I've picked someone better to come on for the first one because I know the the experience and knowledge that you have, and um, it's it's a massive opportunity for people to learn from so so thank you very much for for giving up uh no time out of your your busy schedule for to come on and do this mark it's been a uh, great you appreciate yeah. no problem Tyler. thank you and um hopefully i didn't ramble on too much and hopefully I did break things down for people so they could kind of gather a bit of info out of this um and if i didn't you're probably the same and um if someone wants to contact me and touch on anything i did say i want wants any more kind of information on it I'm happy to help and happy to answer where I can. And I'm sure you're the same, Adam. If there's any questions that kind of people have after this, we're both of us are open to reach all the time on our, on our social media. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're open books all the time. And I think that's why I wanted to bring you on because you do give a lot on, on your social medias in regards to that, that kind of coaching approach and, and how much of an open book you are. It's, uh, it's refreshing to see because not a lot of coaches are are that way so i think we'll, we'll wrap up the the initial podcast there though thank you very much for for coming on and giving your time and um, for for everyone listening you know just thank you very much for for seeing this out it was a it was a great first podcast i'm extremely grateful for uh, for mark for coming on like i said and we will have the next episode should be live uh, at some stage next week i'll be bringing on ashling o'keefe from aok and um, AOK Nutrition. She is a kind of expert in female physiology, and we're going to be diving into to everything kind of in that realm of of female physiology. So we'll we'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, dude, for for taking time for coming on again. Here's Adam. Thanks for having me.